Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I bring you the Dell XPS 13 7390, which is not to be confused with the 9370. This one came out a year later, in 2019, and sports some of the same features, uh, but a lot of new ones as well. So, cosmetically, they look almost the same. There's no trapdoor anymore, they just have the information printed here at the bottom. Your port selection is a bit different, um, we'll dive into that in a little bit. And then of course the interior is almost the same, but with some key and very important differences up at the top of the display. In other words, they finally put the camera where it's supposed to be. Now one of the things you will note is that I am holding my finger down on this chassis, and that is because if I let go, it likes to tip up. That is because this model is missing its battery. So that's one of the things that sometimes when you buy these things from resellers and refurbishers, there's parts missing. And if you don't read the fine print, you might be like, oh no, there's parts missing. And uh, in this case, that was, I think, what had happened. Now, all that being said, though, battery is easy to find. In fact, this machine is still under warranty for another couple of months, February of 2023, I believe. So if you are finding these 7390s out there, there might be a trickle of warranty left depending on the package. Let's dive in on what we've got going on in front of us. We have the standard 13.3 inch display, and it came in several varieties, a 1920 by 1080, a 1920 by 1080 touch, and the 4K Infinity Edge touch display, which this is in fact one of those, and that is a 3840 by 2160 resolution. Now, interesting enough, the documentation on this specific model from Dell was considerably better than some of the other models that I have seen. In fact, it tells me that the power draw of the 1920 by 1080 displays is 2.9 watts, whereas this one, the Infinity Edge, is 5.41 watts. So not quite double, but a significant rise. So keep that in mind if you are a person that watches your watts. CPUs in this were all 10th generation Intel and they varied from an i3 uh, 10110U, an i5 10210U, and then two i7 variants, the 10510U and the 10710U. And this is the 10510U variant. And we had all sorts of uh, features on this, like a backlit keyboard, fingerprint reader built in, I believe, to the power button. RAM was either 4, 8, or 16 gigabytes of low power DDR3 2133 megahertz, which is a bit odd, I think, on a machine of this vintage that it is still running that uh, DDR3 style RAM, but I'm sure that there's a good reason for it. SSDs were either a M.2 NVMe 2280 or 2230 on the inside. The 2230 is limited, I believe, to 256 gigabytes, and I believe that has more to do with um, how many chips can exist on one side of those and still fit inside the machine. And as I mentioned earlier, they finally decided to put the camera in the correct place at the top of the screen, which I am really glad to see that they finally sorted that out. So let's close the lid and take a quick tour of some of the ports and features on this machine. On the left-hand side here, we have the Kensington lock slot or some kind of lock slot. We have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and then, of course, we have the standard uh, battery indicator. You press the button, it'll show how, many, uh, how much charge your battery has. Since there's no battery, that does not work. On the front, the charge plug-in indicator light has been maintained. And then on the other side, we have a headphone microphone combo jack, and then a USB Type-C uh, 3.1 Gen 2 port that's got power delivery and display port built in. We also have a micro SD card slot as well. So the full card slot is gone. The USB-A ports are gone. And then along the back, we have absolutely nothing going on whatsoever. Now flipping this over to do some disassembly, this is where another change has occurred and that is the inclusion of pentalobe screws. So prior to this, it was just torque screws to open up one of these. Now it appears that a size five pentalobe is what's required. At least I think that's the name of this screw. So if we line that up and spin these out, it's pretty trivial to gain access to the inside of this machine. 
I understand why that they've probably gone with as many screws as they have because they're uh, reducing their reliance on plastic clips, which is generally seen as a good thing because plastic clips do eventually break after the machine has been opened enough. So opening this thing up on the inside, there are some key differences to how things are laid out. So with the battery gone, we get a really good look at the inside of all the serviceable components. We can see that it appears that the keyboard can come out very easily with the removal of those screws. The trackpad as well seems to be like hinged into place there. We see a small uh, kind of auxiliary board over here. And then of course we have our large main board that has lots of different little shields. And oddly enough, two fans side by side spinning what appears to be against each other. And they're intaking here and exhausting out the back like we normally see on an XPS. We do have our small uh, CMOS battery here. The battery connector for the main battery of course would sit here. And we have our side mounted speaker chambers here and here. Now, moving further over here, we can see that there are some heat shields that are covering some CPU components and what have you. Uh, there's some stuff that's very heavily uh, taped down. And I believe uh, that the Wi-Fi is integrated into the motherboard. I do not see uh, any indication that uh, that is not the case. And of course, we have our 2280 NVMe under this heat shield as well. So serviceable components are essentially, if you tear it down, you can still replace the mouse, uh, the click pad, the keyboard. You have your CMOS battery. You have your SSD. So I'm going to throw the cover of this back on and let's see what a 10th generation Intel um, with lots of RAM uh, boots like. All right, with all the screws back into place, I'm gonna have to reach down here and get our power cable and let's see what we get. Hmm, it looks like a BIOS update was in progress when this thing was unplugged or lost its battery. That's not great. All right, so that boot test wasn't really indicative because there was apparently lots of updates that still needed to be processed. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is that this Infinity Edge display uh, is quite fantastic to look at. All right, so let's try a uninterrupted boot sequence here. All right, now that's the sort of speed that I would expect to see for an i7, 16 gigs of RAM. So overall, this is an excellent little piece of kit, uh, if you can find one at a, you know, respectable price. And they will command a, a pretty decent price starting anywhere from uh, 500 Canadian dollars and all the way up to some of the higher end models, six or even 800. And that's to be expected with such a new machine uh, they will command a higher price, uh, but you might be lucky enough to get one in good shape and still under warranty. Um, but also make sure you're doing a lot of looking around because once you start climbing into that kind of higher price bracket, you have so many, so many options available to you. Um, that being said, though, this is certainly uh, a very decent little machine. And again, it's good to see that they fixed a few things like the webcam replacement, the inclusion of maybe an additional Thunderbolt or USB type C port. The one thing that is sad to see, of course, is the full size SD card reader is gone and there is no standard USB type A ports anymore, even though the footprint of this machine is not significantly different. Um, it is a little thinner around the edges, but in terms of the overall thickness to its predecessor, uh, it's actually pretty comparable. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the look at this Dell XPS 7390. If you do have any questions, make sure you are putting them in the comment section down below. And I would especially love to hear if you have used one of these things or if you're currently using one of them, what is it like for you? And of course, if you enjoyed this content, I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get the opportunity to feature a kind of higher end business class laptop like this, You'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much. 
and I'll see you next time.